Hey, what's up fellow SEOs? Today I'm going to review a plugin that I like to use. Uh, replaces an old one called Dagon, G-A-D-A-G-O-N, um, sitemap generator, which hasn't been updated in years. So there's a plugin that I like to use called WP Sitemap. On my screen you can see WP Sitemap, and uh, I'm not going to attempt to try to pronounce that, but uh, Jens <laughs> here, uh, you can find this person simply grab this WP sitemap, do a search if you're looking to add this new plugin, super super easy I'm in WP sitemap, search plugins, you'll see it usually right at the top you'll see that I already have it installed here's what it should look like once you have that installed you can go to any page on your website, there isn't anywhere you can configure this within the menu but you can go to any page on your website that you decide you want to have a sitemap on and very simply add some code. So you have to go to HTML mode to make this happen. Uh, you know, you might actually be able to do it from visual because it is a short tag, but I like to do things in HTML to keep it organized. And I've added some, some extra spacing or indentation by simply adding in an ordered list. You can play around with this and see what works best for you, but at a bare minimum, at least you'll have a sitemap. And sitemaps are a great way to allow the search engines to find sort of a table of contents of all the different content you have on your website, rather than crawl through category, subcategory, and down to each detail page to figure out and, and catalog all this stuff, just give them a list. Give them two lists. Give them the XML, which is a whole different plugin, and then give them the static sitemap where they can actually read keywords that are in those the, the link text, or we call anchor text. So if they can read those keywords, they use that as part of the cataloging process. Not nearly as important as it was, say, back in 2005, 2008 uh, range, but um, you know it's still important because Google needs a way to sort of create a nice little table of contents that the Google bot can crawl through. The difference between an XML is you're simply feeding them a list uh, of URLs that you would like them to crawl. However, a sitemap, uh, a sitemap allows the, the search engine to go directly to a page um, and crawl through, literally with a little web spider, crawl through each link on your website. And the text in those links describes what your content is about. Now, if you're thinking creatively like I do, you're probably thinking, I'm going to go out to all of my competitor websites, find their sitemap, and make a big list of all the keywords they're targeting. Yes, you should do that. In fact, stop, pause the video, go out and do that right now and come back because that's something you don't want to forget to do because it's going to give you a really good insight as to what your competitors are targeting in terms of keywords. So um, anyway, so I've got, I've got two instances of this. If you want to just slap on the sitemap and leave it alone, you can leave out some of these attributes like um, the pages and posts. So I'm, I'm going to tell WordPress to only display pages first and then not to, to do posts on this particular list. And I'm going to use sort column post page. By the way, the plugin has a cool little thing list here where you can see all of the different attributes. So it's at uh, devdevote.com forward slash CMS. Well, you can see my screen forward slash WordPress hyphen plugins forward slash WP hyphen sitemap. That is the page there. So grab this page and you can see here that there's all sorts of shows you the features shows you the different attributes you can use and then it gives you an example of how to use it you can also come back to this video and take a look at how I've done it and there's specific pages that I don't want the web crawlers to crawl pages that are the you know thanks for registering and thanks for contacting us I don't want my, my web analytics to get skewed because somebody stumbled upon a page within the search engine results like a thank you page that I don't really want to be indexed so I've excluded those pages that I really don't want thanks for registering and that kind of stuff so um, uh, anyway I've done a pretty good job already of blocking that that content you know through registration but at the same time you never know um, other, other attributes I've put in here so I want this sorted by date you can also sort it uh, in other modes. So let's go down to sort order. Uh, sorry, sort column. You can do it by date. You can do it by title. I like it by date because I like the fresh stuff to be right at the top. But you can choose to do it by title if you're an alphabetical kind of person. Um, you can do it by when it was modified, uh, last time that you'd made an update to that page. And you can also do it by comment count. So if there's a lot of comments on that particular post, um, you could display your popular content first, which is kind of a good idea if you've got some really popular content on your site. And then you can decide, do I want it um, reverse order or 
um, you know, do I want its oldest to newest, etc., etc. I did mine by date where it does the newest first, so I did it descending, but you can have it ascending as well if you want to start from old, which doesn't make a lot of sense for blog posts, because why would you want to show a post from 2003, you know what I mean, first? Uh, and then post count, I kind of like all my pages to be on there. When you get over, you know, a few hundred posts, maybe 500, you might want to do some pagination, pagination? So I might just change it to 500, and at that point I can actually start to do some pagination, um, you know, and have it go to page two, page three, page four. But um, I, I really don't need to segment my sitemap at this point because I'm only at about 150 posts or something like that. And then the next one here, so I, I put a subheading in here called Pages because my H1 is always my uh, WordPress title. I only need one H1 per page. And then on recent posts, I've done the exact opposite. I've made it uh, Pages false, don't show pages, but do show posts. Let's sort it by date, and let's sort it by order. Oh, in fact, because this is pages, I really don't need um, this sorted by dates. I'm actually going to want to have it done alphabetically because it just makes more sense to do it that way. So it's going to be title. So I'm going to go ahead and change that while I'm working on this. Post title for pages, just to make it easy. We go ahead and click on update, and let's take a look at what our sitemap looks like. Here we go. Oh, I have it descending. Let's change it back to ascending. I think it's ASC. If you don't know, you always look. Two seconds. Click on update. Go back to sitemap. Let's reload this page. And there you go. So all the pages now are listed by an alphabetical order. There's no thanks for signing up or any of that kind of stuff in here couple duplicate pages I need to clean up because I've migrated like six websites to this place. Um, and then I've got my recent posts by the most updated, which I like a lot. And this is the sitemap page. Very easy to do. You saw how I installed it. Here's the shortcut. I'll try to put this in the video uh, description for you as well, just so that you have it. Save a copy of that. And that is the WP sitemap plugin. Why you want to use it is it increases um, your performance from an indexing perspective to allow the web crawlers to get to your content quickly. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is it also, when you think about links as votes, it also gives you a, um, a hub as a simple way to distribute page rank you know, throughout your website without the search engines having to crawl down. Because the sitemap is linked to every page on your website, uh, it's much easier and much faster for search engines to access content without having to drill down within categories and subcategories if you have them set up that way. So this is Steve Wiedemann. I hope you found this video useful. If you want more tutorials on this kind of stuff, check out that trainingguide.com. We've got plenty more where, uh, where this came from. So lots of videos and great content for you to check out. Uh, thanks for watching, and we will see you soon.